everybody. Where everybody at? Yes, come on in. It's Testimony Tuesday time. Come on in. Hey, Nikki, what's going on? My cousin there. Hope everything is going good. Hope you're doing good. Hope life is treating you good. It's good to see you join me for Testimony Tuesday time. What's going on? Yes. We're listening to the opening praise song, God Did It Again. Uh, and the song is by, uh, who is the song by? Brandon Anderson. He said he can't keep it to himself. God did it again. Hey, Miss Sue, good to see you. Happy Tuesday. Yeah. He said God did it again. Come on in. Hey, my cousin Brenda, good to see you. Y'all come on in. God did it again. Yes, come on in, come on in. Y'all tag somebody. Come on in. Yes. Come on in. Yes. Come on in. Share with somebody. You sitting at the beach, Nikki? Oh my God. I need to come join you, girl. Yes. Yes. God did it again. God did it again. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Yes. Yes. God did it again. Come on. Yes. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. He's safe. So give him praise. And when he comes through, don't forget to tell the world. Oh. Yes. Come on in. Come on in. Where y'all at, everybody? It's good to see everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy Fat Tuesday for my Louisiana family. Happy Mardi Gras for my Louisiana family. Today is Fat Tuesday when everybody in Louisiana some way is doing something to celebrate Mardi Gras. I kind of missed it because when I lived in New Orleans, I was right in the mix of it all. But I want to say Happy Fat Tuesday to those in Louisiana. You know what I'm talking about. And to those who don't, do a little research. Google it. What does Fat Tuesday mean? Google it so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, I want to send a shout out to uh, my crew that I was a member of when I lived in New Orleans. It was a mystic crew of Femme Fatale. Shout out to y'all ladies, y'all red and black. The ladies that know what's all about. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Fat Tuesday. I'm a little pumped up because I miss my crew. I rode on the float uh, for Mr. Crew of Femme Fatale. I rode on the float for Zulu. And I know the Zulu parade is off the chain today. Anyway, happy Fat Tuesday. And to all of you all who are here, thank you for joining me live. And those who listen to the replay, thank you to, for listening to the replay. That song we was listening at to get our groove and our move on was called God Did It Again by Brandon Anderson and every time I hear that song I just want to rock 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 with it so I thank God for having artists to just really sing songs that get you in the mood and get your spirit coming I want you to take a minute real quick just really really quick and I want you to hit your share button and I want you to share with people on your page let them know testimony Tuesday is live and it's about to go down so I want to thank you all. Those who have already shared, thank you so much. I appreciate you. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome for those of you who don't know and those of who do know and been rocking with me. I am Anita Johnson Merchant, known as the prayer advocate, and I am sold out to prayer. What does that mean? Psalms 116 and 2, New Living Translation Version. Make a note of that. Psalms 116 and 2 says, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Isn't that amazing about the God we serve? He bends down to listen to us when we go to him in prayer. So here's what I do. I help educate, equip, and encourage people with all types of backgrounds who may have a prayer life and is stagnated or who do not have a prayer life and want to establish a, a consistent prayer life. And what I do is I have a signature program called The Prayer Incubator, where you get educated, you get equipped, and you get encouraged on things to put in place to maintain that consistency. Your prayer life is not a success. Uh, your prayer life is not what it should be if it's not consistent. So I wanna let you all know and encourage you, if you are struggling with your prayer life, you know as an adult if you're struggling or not. You know as an adult if it's dull, if it's boring, if it's if you do it at nine, then as they say, or you only do it when your back is up against the wall. That is not a consistent prayer life. So you're going to be hearing more and seeing more information about the prayer incubator. And I pray that you go to God first and ask him if you should uh, participate in the prayer incubator so that you can get your prayer life where it needs to be. We're in 2023. What are you waiting on? If your prayer life is dull in 2022, you were struggling in 2022, you came into 2023 with the same mindset, doing the same things, guess what? you're going to get the same results. I'm just putting that out there just to let you know nothing is going to change if you don't change. So let's uh, get into the announcements. You know, I get into the announcements and do a little chat chat before we get into the Holy Spirit lead word. I want to remind you to go to my YouTube channel because God has opened the door for me. He's given me something else to do, but it probably only will be on YouTube, not, not the other social media platforms. I don't know. I let the Holy Spirit lead me, but I have been posting some things on my YouTube channel that's not on Facebook, that's not on Instagram, and that's not on TikTok. God has opened a door for me, and you all are going to be seeing a little bit more about it. It's a passion I've had from a little girl, but I never really stepped into it full force. I attempted to. I kind of dabbed and dibbled a little bit in it, and then I pulled back. And then I would try it again and I pulled back. But this year in 2023, when I had some time with God, he asked me what was stopping me. Just go for it. Even if I don't feel like it's going to be what it's going to be, leave him in charge. After all, he's the one who can do what it needs to be. And so you're going to be seeing some things where I am doing a little different. And a little something different, but it's a blessing from God where I want to just say this. You're never too old to start pursuing a dream that you've had even from a little girl. You are never too old. I am 62 and I am just not getting into this part of a dream that I had from a little bitty girl. Like I said, you'll have to go to my YouTube channel to hear and know all about it. As a matter of fact, when I finish Testimony Tuesday, I'm going doing a Q&A live on YouTube uh, in celebration of today is two years. Come on, Jesus. That I have been doing Testimony Tuesday. Can you believe that? For two years today, uh, I have been doing Testimony Tuesday. And let me just say this. It is nothing to do or have nothing to do with me. Because when God first told me to do this, I kept talking myself out of it. I kept telling him, well, no, God, I don't know. Well, no, I got this and I got this. He's making all kind of excuses and excuses after excuses. But he never did stop putting it into my spirit and my heart. And so that's how I came about to doing Testimony Tuesday. I'm going to be honest with you. There are some Tuesdays I do not want to do Testimony Tuesday. There are some Tuesdays I'm like, this is the last one. I'm going to throw in the towel. There are some Tuesdays I'm like, ain't nobody listening to me. And Holy Spirit admittedly. That's what I like about the Holy Spirit. Admittedly, the Holy Spirit puts me in check and tells me why I am doing what I do. And so I just want to say a shout out. 
You know, I always do a shout out. So today I'm giving a shout out to God. I want to celebrate two years of Testimony Tuesday. I give a shout out to God. I shout out to God first for choosing me. I shout out to God for anointing me. I shout out for God because God gets all the glory. I'm telling y'all, it was nobody but God. It is only God who keeps me moving, keep me focused, keep me spending time studying his word to be able to come before his people. It is all God. So I want to give God all the glory. It's not Anita. Has nothing to do with me. As I was saying, if it was left up to Anita, it would not be getting done. And so I just thank God and I praise him for giving me what I need. The tools, the mindset, the spirit to move forward and keep doing testimony choosing. So I want to say this to you. If there's something in your heart that God has told you you can do and that you should do. If there's something the Holy Spirit has been nudging you to do. I encourage you to just step out on faith and do it. When you say the yes, God will do everything else that you need. Don't let it be a money issue. Don't let it be a time issue. Don't let it be an age issue. Don't let it be that I got children, I got a husband and all that other stuff. Don't let any of that stop you from saying yes to God. One of the main reasons I did say yes to God, and all of you all could probably relate to this. When I sat down and I thought about all the things that God had done for me, I was like, how dare I say no to the God who has been my provider? He's been my friend. He's been my security. He's been my protector. He's been my lover. He's been my everything. So how dare me, a sinner like this little girl Anita Merchant is, tell him no. And so I want to encourage you, if you're at home, or if you're struggling with something about, well, uh, I don't know. The people might not receive it. Uh, I don't know. They might talk about me. Uh, I don't know. They ain't going to like me. all of that stuff. That's nothing but the adversary trying to talk you out of your blessings that's ahead that God is just waiting on you to do the yes and make the move. When you say yes, I promise y'all, Lord, I get emotional. He's going to order your steps on how to do it. Let him figure out the why and the how and the when. You just say yes. So before I get into the Holy Spirit led word, because this is going to tie into a testimony that I'm sharing with you all about transformed, being transformed. You know, we know that scripture about being transformed, not being in the word of the world and all of We know that scripture. That's a cliche that we, we constantly hear. But in my study time, um, I have these cards that's called I value you that I read one every morning just to motivate, shift my mind, get me into the mode of sitting down and studying the God's word. And my card today says this. I am transformed. I see the beauty of change. Everything I have been through. Come on, Holy Spirit. Transform me into who I am today. I am so much braver. I am so much caring. I am so much emotionally intelligent. I am so much more open. I will continue changing and improving. I am transformed. So this was my card for today, but it ties into our Holy Spirit led word that's going to go forth today. And so let's pray before we go into the Holy Spirit led word. Today, God, we say thank you. And today, God, we are just so grateful that you allowed us to come into this day. Father, we thank you for choosing us because you chose us individually to wake us up individually where we were this morning. And we say thank you. Father, I ask that this word go forth and your people receive it according to your will and your way. Remove me out of the way, Lord, and let it all be you. Allow the Holy Spirit to consume and to take over. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen man. So welcome you all who have just joined us. I thank you for joining us. If you get a chance to hit the share button so you can have your friends and family enjoy this Holy Spirit led word. Today's Holy Spirit led word title is it's time to change. Yeah, just that simple. It's time to change. Just that simple. It's time to change. If you remember back in January, I talked about changing something in 2023, something different from 2022. 
Now, y'all might say, well, yeah, you keep talking about that, Anita. But a lot of times as our brain consume something on a regular basis, we tend to retain it and even make take action for it. I don't know. But I was talking about this because coming into 2023, we look back over our lives of 2022 and we think about all of the things that we've been through, all the things that we have done. Maybe they were good, bad or indifferent. All the people we encountered, all the situations, all the problems, all the circumstances, all the disappointments, all of those things we think about that we endured in 2022. And are we carrying some of those things over into 2023? It's something to think about. It's a possibility that you have brought some of those things or the majority of those things from 2022 into 2023. It's a possibility. Only you and God know that. But do you know you can only make a change through the help of God? You cannot do it in your own strength, in your own way, and in your own idea. Did you know when God gives us something to do, or something to change, and we don't do it, or we delay in doing it, we are opening the door for the enemy to have a part of whatever it may be. When we delay, when we say no, or I don't feel like it, or you ignore the spirit of God telling you, because you know, a lot of times we as our people, we'll get a little see now when God is speaking to us as if we don't hear his voice, or we didn't hear what he said. But when we do that, we are giving the adversary an opportunity to come into our lives. What do I mean by this? Only God, the creator, can recreate you. Only God, the creator, can recreate you. We can't do it. Our husbands can't do it. Our pastors can't do it. The church can't do it. The job can't do it. We are nothing without him. With him, we are, are capable of leaving our human flesh, our human failings, our human disappointments, and all those things that you may have bought from 2022 into 23. We are able to leave those things behind us when we say yes to what he's asking us to change. When we take heed and make the change in which God brings to our attention, you daily become the person God is creating you to be. You are being created every day. You don't remain the same as, as those of us who have lived a long time can say, I'm here these many years, but I am not the same as I was back in 20 years ago or back in 10 years ago. Every day you wake up, you are being created to change something. You will never be able to stay and remain the same, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. God created us that way and he created us that way so that we would totally depend upon him and no one else. No one else was the one who created us. Yes, your mother brought you into the world. God planted you into her womb. Yes, we know all of those things. But where did the creation come from? Yes, your mother and father connected and hooked up and it created a baby. But where did the creation come from? It's the question that you have to constantly remind yourself from. So we cannot do it in our own strength. When we try to take control and do it in our own strength, we invite sin into the circumstances, the situation, the relationship, or the people, or the person, or the thing. We try to do it in our own strength. We invite sin or the enemy into the situation. I want you to remind yourself that you can't do it by yourself. You'll be BFF can't do it for you. Your loved ones can't do it from you. You have to allow God, the creator, to help you to change. He's going to tell you what you need to change. Now, when you be senile, or you're not going to pray about it, or you're not going to pray and ask him to show you uh, uh, how to do it, then you're inviting sin because you're trying to do it in your own strength. So, you know, I always bring everything back around to the topic of prayer. I'm the prayer advocate. So I'm going to always be talking about prayer. Anybody who can tell you, meet me, a conversation is going to be part of it. It's going to spark up something about prayer. That's just the way God has created me. Praise the Lord. Let's be specific about asking God to show us at least one or two things 
or it may be several things for you that you need to change about your prayer life because it's going to start with your communicating with him. How do I communicate with him, Anita? Through your prayer life. Yeah. Yes, we communicate with him through worship and praise. Yes, we communicate with him through other methods. But the prayer is the substance of what he's given you to communicate with him. So let's let's think about what would I ask God, though, do I need to change when it comes to my prayer life? One thing could be to establish a prayer life if you don't have one. It's a lot of people you would be surprised who say they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Shouting all through church. Go to church every Sunday. They call God their heavenly father. Oh, they have all of these magnificent words to say about him. But they don't have a prayer life. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that kind of make you go, hmm. You don't use or have the number one tool that he gave you. But you say you have a relationship. Okay, let me move on. Uh, 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 ask him, Lord. What do I need to change about my prayer life? Do I need to spend more time in prayer? Do I need to establish some consistency? Because I've just been doing it every now and then. And I've just been praying when I only need you. God, what do I need to change with my prayer life? Will it be, God, do I need to meditate on your word a little bit more? Do I need to study your word a little bit more? Because you have to study his word to be able to know how to pray to him. His word teaches you on how you should pray to him. We hear people pray. You've heard me pray. But God's word will really teach you how to pray. God's word will co connect you with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will lead you on what you should say in your prayer life. There are so many Bible verses about prayer is the major, major, major thing that you need to know and have in your life for 2023. If you didn't have a prayer life in 2022, you need to be concerned. If you've been praying every now and then, and like you are in 2022, just every now and then, or when you just got the feeling, or when you somebody say, let's pray or whatever, then you need to be concerned. If you're not praying frequently, you don't have enough time for God in the course of the day of the hours he gives you and he wakes you up, you need to be concerned. The Bible verses in the uh, Bible that talks about prayer gives you specifically things where God says all the time in his word. He says this, pray without ceasing. How do I know that? Because I read and study his word. I'm not basing it on what I hear on Sundays in church or a sermon that I may hear on YouTube or the radio or whatever. Yeah, I'm getting in the word to believe and know for myself that he says to pray without ceasing. The Bible has 650 prayers about prayer in the Bible. Did you know that? That there's 650 verses in the Bible about prayer. So we see from that, prayer must be very important. Being sold out to prayer, God gave me a few things to add to my prayer life in 2023. Yes, you will never master prayer. You will never say, well, I've learned enough about prayer. You will never say, or be able to say that, you know, I just pray enough and that's good enough for me. Prayer is something you never master. And so what God was sharing with me, some things that I needed to change and add to my prayer life, I was willingly to do those things because I've already seen what prayer would do for your life. And so I didn't give a no answer or, or I didn't stall or I didn't question him or I didn't say, oh, I don't have time or I can't do it. I just willingly said, this is for me. God, thank you. God is about action. You have to remember this. He's about action. We know that they say talk is cheap. Don't we hear that all the time? Oh, they do all that talking. But what is they doing? What they going to do? They ain't doing nothing. And so we believe and know and have seen what talk is cheap. God's word says faith without works is dead. So you want to have a relationship with God and you want to open your mouth and say you have a relationship with God. But you don't have a prayer life. Hmm. Does that sound sound okay to you? Does that sound like something that, hmm, hmm, that should make you go, hmm, when somebody says, I have a relationship with God, but I don't have a prayer life. It should make you wonder. God is about action. God is about action. God is about action. God is not about 
saying something, but you do nothing with it or about it. When you read his word, he tells you meditate on it day and night. There's a reason why, because he knows the mind will forget once it's put, put, put it down or release it. And so when you're reading his word every day, your heart changes, your mind changes, your actions change. When he comes to you to speak to you about doing something, you are willing to do it. You accept it in a hurry because you have been in his word and you have a prayer life of consistency with him. It's time that you go in that house or home where you live. Get in the mirror. Get in the mirror. Ask God. What action do I need to take in my prayer life this year, Lord? Because, Lord, I know last year my prayer life was not much. My prayer life was just okay. It wasn't all right. It was, it was just, you know, I was just doing it because people say I'm supposed to pray. But I didn't dive into your word to strengthen my prayer life. I didn't dive into your word to be able to know what I need to pray to you. It's nothing more powerful. If you want to get God to move on earth from heaven... Is to pray his word back to him. Pray his promises that he made back to you. You won't know what to pray if you're not in his word. You won't know what to pray just hearing, hearing a sermon on Sundays. You won't know what to pray if you don't have a prayer life. It's time to change. Get in that mirror and ask God, what action do I need to take to change my prayer life. Everybody on this earth, from the Pope on down, from the president and anybody else, God has told them something they need to change. Now, they may be ignoring it or maybe stubborn and don't want to do it because sometimes we hear people in their older ages, well, that's just the way I am. I'm going to the grave like that. Oh, that breaks my heart. When somebody say, I'm going to the grave like I am. That breaks my heart because that's just like saying, God, there's nothing else that you can do with me. There's nothing else I need you for. There's nothing else that I want, want you to do. Just take me right now how I am. And would you be ready for that is the question. So be careful what you hear people say and you pick it up and you repeat and go on with it. Because I, like I said, when somebody tells me, well, Anita, that's just the way I am. I'm going to go to my grave like that. It breaks my heart because to me, it's like saying God is done. There's nothing else that he can do. And so I want to encourage you, take some time, get in the mirror and look in the mirror and ask God, what actions or what do I need to do to change, enhance, improve, Become consistent with my prayer life in 2023. Lord, I don't want my prayer life to be like it was in 2022. It's time. It's time to change. When God says in his word that you have to seek, ask, knock. And he will listen to you. He will open up the door for you. There's nothing like going to him and asking him. Lord, show me what I need to change. It's time to change. As I close, we're going to pray. And I want you to remember, your prayer life is just as important as the air that you breathe. I'm going to say that one more time. Your prayer life is just as important as the air that you breathe. So let's go to the throne of grace. God, oh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you today just as we are. And first, we just want to give you the highest praise of hallelujah. We want to give you the highest praise of hallelujah because you are our Lord of Lord. You are our King of Kings. You are our everything. You are our Prince of Peace. You are our love. You are our joy. You are our everything. And so as we come before you as your people today, Father, we just want to acknowledge who you are. You are all 
that you say that you are in your word. And for that, we say thank you. You are a God who never breaks his promises. And for that, we say thank you. Father, we ask you to forgive us already today if there's something we've done or said or did or thought that was not pleasing to you, forgive us today, Father. Father, forgive us if we haven't even had any time with you. We we haven't had any prayer time. We haven't had any quiet time. Lord, forgive us for that, Lord, because we know we're blessed that you woke us up to come into this day. Father, I come to you on behalf of your people, asking you right now, in the name of Jesus, that you open their eyes and their hearts to come to you and ask you, Lord, what do I need to change about my prayer life in 2023. Father, we know that prayer is the number one communicating tool we have to have a relationship with you. Prayer is the number one tool we use to fight the adversary. And so, Father, we thank you for leaving prayer on this earth, leaving your word full of praise and prayer, Lord God. We thank you that we don't have to even question. We just go to the book. And so, Father, we say thank you, Lord. I ask you right now, Lord, when you give them what they need to change, that out of obedience and out of hearing the Holy Spirit, that they will come together within themselves, even if it's involving someone else to pray with them, that they will take the action and they will move and do it. Not just talk about it, but to be about it with their actions, Father. Father, I know beyond the shadow of the doubt, there are so many people who are struggling with their prayer lives, but they're allowing their pride to block them, to stop them, to keep them held back before they open up their mouths and say, I need some help with my prayer life. Father, I ask that you touch them and remind them that pride is not of you, that that is of the adversary. And that prayer is something that not only you cherish, but you have given to us freely. And so we just say thank you today, Father. God, I ask you to also touch them and lead them in the direction you would have them to go. Whether it's something small or something major that they need to change, order their steps, Lord. Keep them, Lord, coming to you. Keep them covered under you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Father, we thank you today. I hope that you all have been blessed by this prayer. And I want you to remember this. Nothing good or bad. Remember this. Let nothing good or bad interrupt your consistent prayer life. You all be blessed and have an amazing, amazing afternoon. Don't forget, I'm going to be going live on YouTube to celebrate the anniversary of two years of Testimony Tuesday. You all be blessed. <clears throat> BGA one time, let's go. Yes, thank you all for joining. Hey, Lula, my sister in law. So, what you gonna do? Yes, yes. Right now, on this song, 